Hi, welcome to Hell of My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I have a guest with me. John Shackle, yay! <laughs> so John has been helping me with the miniatures reviews, and we're going to cover some of the sort of character builds that you can use in your game, and John is going to give you an example of one that he's already built. Um, <laughs> and broken. And broken. <laughs> okay, so uh, pretty much what I've made um, is a swashbuckler that's multi-classed into a fighter. Or he started off as a fighter in his, in his early career and thought, hey, these rogues do a lot more damage to me even though they seem to do, you know, only attack once. I think I might join them. So that's pretty much what happened is he started off as a fighter, he got to level 3, so he became a champion, just because, you know, when you want to roll a crit, double your chances. Um, and... So, so with, with the fact that you, you've selected that particular um, class from level 1 to 3 as the f starting out, and that's to get the armor? That's to get, to get access to full, to full armor, uh, full items, uh, full weapons, second wind, not so great, Action search, yeah. Okay, so get the action search yeah. is a big thing, and uh, with the fighter, obviously, you've got you've got quite a few. Um, you got martial arch archetype, don't you? At yeah. Level three, and and you've selected champion, and that's what the key reason being. You get to roll crits on nineteen and twenty. Okay, so you're improving your crit range, which means that if you crit more often. You get to champion. roll more dice. Yeah, you get double your dice, and if you're also sneak attack damage. Yeah, it's when you crit, you roll all dice. And if you can imagine what a high level rogue can be like on a crit, oh yeah. I know you've rolled stuff in, in the hundreds. Yeah. We, like a hundred plus in damage. Yep. At high level. Um, that which, was with a lot of sixes. But, 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 but he's, he's done it quite a lot. Or even if it's not at a hundred, it's been just under. Mm. And uh, that's literally like wipe the floor with a monster. Um, so that's, that's the reason for doing it at level one, up to level three, the fighter. Yeah. And then you switch to the swashbuckler, which is already an incredibly broken class. Well, you go to rogue first, and then you go to swashbuckler. Oh, do you? So, yeah. so how many in, in rogue? Uh, you, well, pretty much you just keep in rogue from the rest of the, rest of the time. Uh, but, I mean, uh, rogue archetype is then swashbuckler, so you don't get swashbuckler until rogue three. Oh, okay. Not rogue one, rogue three. Uh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so it's three levels in fighter first, Yep. then three levels in rogue. Yep. Or you can mix and match as long as you finally get by level six that combination. Okay. And the reason for picking up level three levels in rogue after um, three levels of fighter or in that combination, and you do the swashbuckler after? Yep. So, uh, so pretty much as I said, like I said, you want the uh, expended uh, crit range, yeah. the 19th to 20th, but then after that, just the normal rogue, because uh, you've got sneak attack on your turn, yeah. and I mean, especially if you can double the double the chances of sneak attack, that can, as Fred said, break creatures in half well, quite easily. Well, pretty much take them down one round. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's what's happened. Mm. Um, and any other thing in terms of the rogue? Um, well, pretty much the rogue has high defences, uh, it can dodge just about anything. <laughs> so, so you're getting, you're going to be getting your, um, you got your cunning action at level. Yep, level which means two. you can dodge, dash, and hide as a bonus. Mm -hmm. Saves lives. But it's not till level 5 that you're getting uncanny dodge. <laughs> yeah. So do you only take one level in Swashbuckler? No, 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 Swashbuckler is... You know, uh, pretty much what you know. At every class has a special specialization. Oh, it's an archetype. Can, yes, an archetype. Yes. Oh, okay. I never really understood that completely. So that's yeah. an archetype of the rogue. Different book. Um, yeah. Once they brought out the different books, it made combinations a lot more easier to play. So I, to be fair, I don't. I didn't buy this book, um, and I have a whole lot of issues with it. Not because of the rogue. Not, not really because of the rogue, no. I have issues with it because it's a player's handbook and a dungeon master's guide, but not a very good dungeon master's guide as far as I'm concerned. And it's more, I feel, a player's tool, but only half a player's tool. Yeah. Um, and obviously that's to get everybody buying the book, you know, dungeon masters and players. But back to the actual issue, which is this particular build. So, um, in terms of after level 7, 
I have to leave all seven. Well, we'll, 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 go, through, we'll go through the rogue once you get to rogue. So we'll yeah. say three three levels fighter. Once you then get to rogue, you have sneak attack. That just improves every other level. Yep. You have cunning action. Yep. That gets you out of combat as quickly as possible. And you can hide yep. if... if uh, it gives you advantage to stuff like that. Yeah. Um, well, problem with hide is, you know, going in and out Great if you can do it, not so great if you can't. Yeah, I mean, the problem with, with hiding in the middle of a combat once it's already started, it's fine at the very beginning. But really, I feel like the hide action really just pulls your character out of out of trouble. Yeah. And really, chances are you're not going to get a dungeon master who will allow you to have advantage after the combat's already started. Oh yeah. It's really going to be in the beginning. So you're going to make sure you, you pump lots of um, points or make sure you're proficient in stealth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then once you become level three in rogue, that's when the fun really begins. The first ability for the swashbuckler is. You're allowed if you can attempt as long, as long as you attempt to attack a creature, you can walk away without getting attacked back. So you don't even have to hit. You don't even have to hit them. It's like as, you, as long as you make an attack roll. If you can, you can roll ones and you can still walk away. Especially with the rogue ability of being able to dissing out to dash, you can double move. Yeah. The other next one at level three. So that or, means you don't have to bother with disengage. I don't even have to worry. No, it makes the uh, bonus. So uh, that's why it's dashing and hiding. It just makes yeah. it easier. So you just move around the battlefield so yes. much faster. Exactly. It makes it a lot more. Uh, and then the what really breaks it is the other ability you get at level three. You're allowed to add your charisma modifier to your your initiative. What? Yep. Seriously? Yep. Seriously. So it's sensible to put. Some so make sure your score for a charisma is oh, not yeah. too low. Um, it, it makes things later on a little harder to sort out. But this is the other thing. You're, you can sneak attack one on one with a creature. As long as there is nothing else around it, you can sneak attack. So you don't have to worry about having advantage. Don't have to worry about advantage. And you don't have to worry about having one an ally within five foot nope. to threat. Exactly. And which is obviously the thing you're always looking for. You're either trying to get the advantage on the first first attack if you can get it. Yep. So that's where you sneak around as much as you can and convince your players to do the same. Um, and then after that, you're hoping that the tank will get in there and you can start targeting. Yeah. Whatever for a normal want. rogue, but for a swashbuckler, you can rush up as long and attack it, and as long as nothing else is around it, you're fine. So in terms of your abilities, your ability scores, where, where, where are you putting most of your points? Where are you putting most of your, your, your You'd numbers? want to do, you definitely want to have a high dex and high charisma, mm. and you definitely want a somewhat high constitution because you're still going to get hit. Take it, you're still going to get hit, especially every, if you can't finish off a creature in the first go, it can still hit back and you can still get hit by it. Okay, all right, all right. So, so those are those are the three ones that sort of pump Pretty into. much, yeah. Do you usually put um, a negative um, ability in there, or do you usually keep everything sort of flat tens? Um, no, uh, pretty much what I call my dump stats, which is strength, intelligence. I usually leave them as eights uh, because for a rogue, you don't really need strength if you're going to rely on your decks. Yeah, okay, you can be over encumbered quite easily if you use encum encumbered rules. But uh, a lot of people don't use that anymore. Um, I don't really. No. no, no it's just another thing I've got to track. I'm and do a video why do you need years. high intelligence when you probably have a wizard standing next to you doing whatever God knows they need to do? Or in the back line. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah well, that's what the rogues usually stands in the back line, goes up the front, comes back in the back line. Yeah. All right. Uh, and so what else sort of progresses from there? Um, well, pretty much from there on in, it, the rogues' abilities just get exponentially um, crazier you'll have um, oh, expertise I should go through that expertise perception or to sneak um, that just makes it insane because you're, you're pretty much the one that will be seeing things as well and now expertise specifically does what it doubles your proficiency bonus to two of your skills that you're proficient in at, at the beginning Okay, so that that means essentially you'd be you'd go for stealth and you go for perception and then you're pretty much covered and you yeah. can sneak. Or or you could go uh, pretty much thieves' tools or sleight of hand. Um, I always tend to use a character that background has uh, perception as its um, background skill because that way you don't have to worry about trying to figure out how you're going to get it later on. Okay, all right, fair enough. Backgrounds also make a difference, believe it or not. Yes. They certainly can. It's very wise to select the right one. So what sort of background did you pick for the character that you've got? Ah, oh, he's a mighty pirate, he is. So, sailor. He's a sailor. Okay. But with the a variant of a pirate. 
Okay. But he's a good natured pirate. Okay. All right. Okay, so in terms of the rest of this build, because this character that you've currently got is like level 19. Yes. Okay. Um, well, like I said, um, you'll have then um, Uncanny Dodge, Evasion, Blind Sense. <laughs> yeah, Uncanny That's, Dodge yeah. means that you can use a reaction to, to basically... Half damage, half on, on, damage. A, on attack, on a attack. Yeah, as a but reaction. But most of the time you want to use your reaction to sneak attack back. Right. So you, yeah, so you have to really think about whether it's worth dying. Yeah. Um, evasion is brilliant because it's, it just triggers. It doesn't matter how many times, it doesn't require reaction. As long as you can react, you're fine. Yeah, I... I, I and when you have high initiative, you'll be able to react quite a bit quickly. Yeah, I struggle with um, evasion. It's, it's, it's so powerful. Oh, yeah. And most things are dexterity saves. Most things. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then later on, uh, you'll get Blind Sense and, uh, what am I thinking? Oh, Reliable Talent. <laughs> yeah, pretty much anything you're proficient in, when you roll a dice, it, if you roll under a 10, it counts as 10. So, especially in uh, my, my, my last adventure, I said to Fred, I have a bare minimum of 30 on Perception and a bare minimum of 30 on Disarming Traps. Yeah. We don't need to roll anymore. Well, that's that's, that's essentially minimum. I, 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 I don't set my DCs any higher than about 30, so it didn't make any sense. So yeah, it's exactly true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then last and not least, Slippery Mind, you get to, you get to uh, pretty much have proficiency against uh, Wisdom saves. Wizards tend to usually have Wisdom or Charisma. I have yet to see a decent spell that requires Intelligence that, that is actually hit. You do need strength, but hey, that's where if you get grappled or something like that, then you're kind of screwed. But hey, because you're a fighter first, you'll have that as a proficiency. Yay! Okay, and then um, because you've taken three levels in fighter, you're not going to be picking up um, elusive or um, stroke of luck. No, because but that, that is the downside. I mean, stroke of luck is, does seem pretty powerful for a rogue. But I mean, stroke of luck or being able to crit twice as good as, say, a normal rogue. I think the twice as crit is a lot better. Okay. Well, I I, I seem to I tend to agree. That makes makes sense to me. Yeah. And the fact that you you get more attacks. So if you, this is the problem of a rogue. It, it they usually... may only have one attack on their turn, but they get to usually attack outside of their turn. Right. But also too, if you. What if you decide to dual wield with this character? That I've means you can use your that, offhand. But then the thing is, because he's unable to use a shield, he's going to want to have the high AC. Right. So I mean, he has 18 AC at the moment. Um, could have more because he has a friendly little bunny rabbit uh, shield guardian, but we'll leave that one alone. Um, but I mean, you as a rogue, that's your one disadvantage: is you're going to have low AC, even if you have great armor and you're still going to have somewhat low AC. Fighters at high level, you're looking at a bare minimum 23, 24, maybe even a higher depending on what they have. Rogues, they top out at 16, 17 if you're lucky. Okay, alright. So that's pretty much the the fighter, rogue, swashbuckler build. Yes. Uh, and The annoy Fred at all times build. And John has played this particular character right up to level 19, will probably play it right to 20. So he's had a fair amount of experience with it. If the rest of the players don't kill him off because they always think he's evil. Which he could sometimes be. <laughs> yeah, he could be. So yeah, so that's pretty much everything on oh, that. Yeah. Okay, look, if you found this video helpful or informative, please share, like, and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Uh, look, make a comment below if you have any questions on the fighter, rogue, swashbuckler combination. And I will answer those questions after I've talked to John. because. <laughs> I don't really know all that. I might actually be answering those ones. Yeah, he might be able to jump in there and actually look at that video and comment himself. Um, and look, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. See you later.